defenseman or coach Ryan D's bread and butter. This is where I was born. This is where I play. This is what I love to coach. This is what I love to break down. So today I present to you the five best defensive pairings in the NHL this season, this year, based on play this year. Year. There are a couple qualifying factors for this video, including they have to be playing together for a certain amount of minutes. That's over 150 minutes right now. And we are going to use our eye test and statistics to give you our top five list. And for all of you awesome keyboard warriors out there, and you know I love every single one of you that leaves a comment down there, down below, because it helps with the algorithm. Big shout out. I'm also going to give you my opinion on who I think are the top 10 best defensive pairings in the NHL. That's an opinion piece. You know on this channel, we don't just use opinions. We use statistics. We use eye test. We use what's happening right now. And I think you'll be very shocked at who ends up making it onto this list. It's not going to be a lot of the common names that you'd expect. And I feel there's going to be a few people that have skipped this intro that don't get the preamble and let me know down below in the comments. How could you leave my favorite pairing off the list? Let's get after it. The first pairing we're going to bring up might be a bit of a shocker to those of you that don't follow the entirety of the league and stay in your ecosystems in your team's bubble. And that is Vince Dunn and Adam Larson of the Seattle Kraken, baby. The Kraken have been hot. This is the crew that's leading the way right now. Time on ice, 360 minutes. Goals for 24. They are on the ice for 24 goals for goals against 12. That is a really nice differential for this unit and a big reason that Seattle is up top. These are two meat and potato style defensemen. What does that mean? It means two way defenders. They play defense as well as they play offense. They don't do either as a particular specialty. They're just very good hockey players. Both of these guys have been heralded throughout their career as superstars that correction as stars that could turn into superstars. They just haven't gotten there yet. We all remember Adam Larson was traded for the 101 Taylor Hall back there in Edmonton, and Vince Dunn came over to Seattle with his big frame with a lot of fanfare. But this year, they're finally living up to the mantra that was put on them when they entered the league. What is expected goals for and expected goals against? 17 and 14.9. That's the advanced analytics. That is us saying, how are they actually playing? Because there is some puck luck to being on the ice. We can't just use goals for and goals against for a measure of defensemen. That's what a coach and a statistician cares about because at the end of the day, it brings W's. But you want to know, is that going to hold? So they have 17 goals for projected for 14.9 goals against one of the higher ones on this list, but they're still in the positive category. So they make it as number five. Now, Let's go ahead and take a look at why these guys have gotten where they've gotten by showing you a little clip. Seattle likes to play a low to high. So when they end up moving this up here to Vince Dunn, they like going from their forwards back to their defenders. What they're actually looking to do if you're Seattle is they actually play with a down low three man attack triangle with an option to go up to the point. And in this clip, you're going to see they move it up to Vince Dunn and you're going to see the two way defender end up moving it in. So you end up going low to high and now Vince Dunn has an option opportunity here to either step through the middle or yes he can even bump outside to his d partner why would you bump outside to change the angle so you get a better deflection on net but he chooses to go right up the middle he sees daylight he's got a screen steps in and scores this team and this pairing can really do it all yes this was all vince done but we don't have all day to show clips and highlights from these two beauties. And if you're wondering where we end up finding out what these strategies are supposed to be, we go over to Jack Hahn's book. The link is down below in your description. All proceeds go to help this channel. You can see that they actually do end up setting up with a bit of an attack triangle down here. However, the option is very clear. You go up to D1 if you don't have any options down low. And our D1 in that video clip was Vince Dunn, who ended up standing up, putting that puck in the middle of the net. So why don't you head down below to the affiliate link. All proceeds go to help this channel. If you want to really nerd out on hockey, you can follow along with all plays of all 32 of your favorite teams. Thanks to coach Jack Hahn while you're watching your favorite game. Number four comes in. I think it's obvious. 
It's Ryan Lindgren and Adam Fox of the New York Rangers. Some people might be shocked they're not higher on this list. Ryan Lindgren is a good stay-at-home defenseman. He is the yin to Adam Fox's yang. Fox is all gas, all offense, all day. If anything, he's actually a bit of a defensive liability. Watched a lot of Adam Fox. I'm not taking a piece out of your favorite player if you're a Rangers fan, but he really does cause a lot of goals because his ability to push the pace forward. But when you have a goalie like Igor Shosturkin and you got a D partner, a solid as Ryan Lindgren, you can go ahead and push because Fox is going to generate more offense than he's going to cause damage on his team by leaving Lindgren and Shesterkin out to dry. Unfortunately, this year it's been a tough year on Igor Shesterkin, but we saw how this formula got them to the conference finals last year. Fox is one of the most talented skating, playing, offensively gifted defensemen in the NHL, and Ryan Lindgren is no slouch himself. Time on ice has been 293 minutes this year alone. They got 15 goals for, they got 10 goals against. That 10 goals against is usually lower thanks to Lindgren and Shesterkin, and what I love about Ryan Lindgren is he knows where Adam Fox is going to be, and he knows to give Fox the puck. He also knows to become an outlet for Fox, and he gives it right back to Fox. This is a beautiful defensive pairing. Expected goals for is 16.3 goals against is 11.2, so they are performing exactly as expected. Just like we see here against Edmonton, Ryan Lindgren ends up looking for his buddy Adam Fox like I said he would. The scrum down low ends up going up high to Lindgren here, and the first look Lindgren's always going to have is is to Adam Fox. He walks the line beautifully over to the middle, hits his D partner. The offensive gifts that Fox has and the confidence he has to step in and move in with that puck and make a move is absolutely dynamic. His partners know and forwards know they have to get back to cover Fox, so he makes that little dipsy doodle coming around over here, and he ends up burying it right there on the Edmonton Oilers. It's a nice little tip. Apologies. It's an assist, but either way, that's how these guys generate offense in the Big Apple. They are absolutely phenomenal players, phenomenal partners, and they are all about the offense, which is why you have Truba and Miller backing them up as pair two. And most notably, usually play more minutes than Fox and Lindgren. But like, we really can't discount how much importance defensive offense makes to a game. That's why Norris Trophy winners usually have high point totals. It's not because the Associated Press is dumb. It's because it's really only... 15 to 20 players in the league that really produce offense like this out the back end. It's bonus points. Speaking of bonus points, can you go ahead and help me collect some bonus points down below by smashing the thumbs up, hitting that subscribe button. Both of those options are for free. Drop a comment down below if you like this list. Tell me who your favorite defensive pairings are down below. Hit me up over there on Discord if you want to go ahead and join here from Coach Ryan D. The link is below. All of our affiliate links are down there below. And if you want to take a step further and join the coaches staff, that's our collection of super fans here on Hot Garbage Sports. Go ahead, hit that join button down below. Big thank you to all of our amazing supporters here on this channel. Number three is going to be the Vegas Golden Knights. I have Theodore and McNabb. You could have Martinez and Petrangelo. I favor Theodore and Petrangelo. Theodore and Petrangelo. I favor Martinez and Petrangelo more than Theodore and McNabb. But right now, the statistics in the play on the ice say it's Theodore and McNabb. Both are elite. Both are playing excellent right now. Time on ice is 347 minutes. Goals for 18. Goals against is 8. Whoo, baby. Defensively responsible and putting pucks in the net. Expected goals for 19.4. They're underperforming, folks. And expected goals against is 8. So this line is performing exactly as expected in most categories. Look, it's only 1.4 goal differential. That's not anything to really worry about. But if you're ever curious if advanced stats can get it right at times, this is one example where they do. Now, Theodore is an offensive powerhouse, not unlike Adam Fox. Adam Fox is the better of the two, but Theodore is no slouch. And McNabb, again, like Ryan Lindgren, is a stay-at-home defensive partner, but he can skate so well. He's got one of the best skating strides in the NHL for defenders, which is why he's able to push the pace and play with a guy like Shea Theodore. Here's a great example of the partners working together. McNabb is in the middle of the ice. Theodore is near there on the boards. He was pushing for offense. He ends up getting burnt here by the Vancouver Canucks, and you end up with a two-on-one. You know right away, take a look at that little pivot that he made, that back-to-front little pivot in order to get into position. This is why I think he's an excellent skater. And then then what you're going to take a look at is the fact that he's ending up defending the middle. So right here, you want to make sure you are pushing towards this player here with the puck. 
It's fine. Sometimes you want to take the pass. Sometimes you want to take the puck. But you've heard me say it. Make a damn decision. Don't just stay in the middle. And he commits to the puck carrier here. That's fine. You're going to commit to somebody. Commit there. I'd rather you commit to the pass. But he ends up going for the Hail Mary. We see the lie down. You know I don't like the lie down because it is very difficult to recover. So he goes ahead to take it away. But watch his stick there on the left. He ends up getting it behind. He is so body aware. And he ends up pushing the puck over over here into the front of the net but that's not what we're here to see this was a desperation play on a two-on-one watch how they recover the first thing I want you to take a look at here is the battle in front of the net take a look at what Theodore is able to do not a lot of defensemen do this okay he goes in he gets his stick down low and he ties up the player on the back door all right, yes, there is a puck out front and he allows his forward to pick it up. But his goalie has a better chance to stop this than he does the back door. I think it is hyper intelligent that he ends up picking up that stick and not allowing that rebound in. If that goal goes in on the second rebound, so be it. But you cannot allow a third rebound there from the back door. As that puck moves forward, what you end up seeing is because he took that position and because he took the body position here on the Vancouver player, he is now able to carry that puck out of the zone and get out of danger it is a really smart play by both and you can also see his partner McNabb now retreating towards the middle of the net this all seems like common sense if you're a fan but from an NHL standpoint it is very hard to execute on I don't see a lot of defenders able to do that now unfortunately the forward makes a really bad giveaway here trying to give the puck away to Mark Stone but there is no panic in these guys Theodore takes the front of the net McNabb gets in a little bit of a Keystone Cops routine that's okay he's telling his partner right here that was a really stupid pass of yours I didn't like it but don't worry let's get back into position so Theodore takes the middle and then what I want you to take a look at is what McNabb does same thing good body position gets body position on the player to box him out from the shot they're not going to allow a lot of rebounds to come forward he lifts the stick you even saw the little stick break there so as we're going through take a look down low you're going to see McNabb get right in here and he's going to lift that stick it's going to break and we're done. There are so many nuances here in this play. Whoop! <laughs> There's so many nuances on this play. This is an all-star elite defensive pairing. Theodore McNabb coming as three. Number two on this list is not having their best year. Right now, today, how they're playing is fine, but they are so good and it would be so irresponsible for me to keep them off this list like I did some other big names that they have to make their debut there's, they haven't done it. They got to lose it. They got to lose their spot. And it's Taze and Makar. They're not number one right now on this list. There is a defensive pairing outplaying them. They have 240 minutes together on ice. They have 11 goals for, seven goals against. See what I mean? We looked at what Vince Dunn and his line partner was doing. We looked at Fox and Lindgren putting in 15. We just took a look at Theodore. They were at 18. We only have 11 and we have seven against. So it's not the best, but at least they're consistent. And this is how they're playing. This isn't bad puck luck, folks. 11.9 expected goals for, 6.9 expected goals against. They are producing at a rate that they are playing at. That means there's no mistake here. However, they are still the two most talented defensemen in the NHL. I have both inside the top 10 for players. I have Makar at number one. And if you take a look at my defensive list, I have Taze at number six. He's in elite category all his own. He is not just made by Kale Makar. These are two-way offensive and defensive powerhouses. They have everything, absolutely everything that Adam Fox brings to the game offensively, and they have absolutely everything if not more than almost any other defender in the NHL playing on the opposite side of the puck defensively they have big brain plays they know how to transition through the zone these guys are an absolute force and a handful to take care of there really is no way to handle a defensive pairing like this you go ahead you give them 35 to 40 percent of your minutes every night you run those horses because this is the true best pairing in the NHL, but there is one pair above them right now. Pucks right here, they do so many things so well. The first thing that Kale McCarr does here is he's actually going to gap up here on this puck. So what you see is Kale McCarr skating in. He's not afraid of this change here. He is so trusting in his feet and in his skating that Kale McCarr here right here, he does not worry about losing his gap. He can catch anybody in the league if he needs to by pivoting and turning backwards. We've seen him handle McDavid in the playoffs. There isn't a player in the NHL that's scared Kale McCarr in terms of playing. He makes a beautiful D to D pass 
over to Devontae's. Devontae's enters into the zone, and once again, big brain play. Most defensemen would just hammer this around the boards, hoping that the goalie doesn't stop it. He does my favorite play for defensemen. It's called a cross-ice dump-in. Cross-ice dump-ins end up soft and in the corner here, and it's going to allow his forward to pick up that puck. This is actually going to generate a goal, and both of them are in on it. So he makes that cross-ice dump. We see an absolutely beautiful pickup here, a little one-touch pass that ends up coming back. And, ooh, take a look who's back here. It's Kale McCarr again. He's not worried about his gap. He's already up. He's thinking offense. He trusts that his team has the puck under control. They end up booting it back over to Devontae's. They could have put it back here to Kale McCarr. They don't. Devontae's ends up activating and look at all this daylight he has. That's why I say it's not just the Kale McCarr show. McCarr does a lot of amazing things, but look at that. Look how he took that off of the skate. That is skill, skill, skill. Take a look at his back skate here. So we're looking at the puck. We're going to take a look at this back skate. You might have missed it here. It is just absolutely unbelievable. Look, whoop, doesn't even lose anything. Any speed moves it over to his buddy in front. Goal, absolutely filthy. There really is no defensive pairing that's going to do that. They don't lose speed. They're like a wide receiver in the NFL. You put the puck anywhere near them in a radius. It doesn't matter if it's their feet, their legs, their hands, their stick. It's going to kick up right onto their blade. They're going to continue without losing speed. They're going to play with their head up. They're going to put the puck in the back of your net. And if it's going back the other way, they're likely going to catch you. They're likely going to box you out. And they're going to likely keep the puck out of their own net. They're an absolute force to be reckoned with, and that is why they have a Stanley Cup right now. And there's a reason they're not number one on this list, and that is because Siegenthaler and Hamilton are. They have ungodly, unworldly numbers. You can't keep these guys away from number one because we said it's how they're playing right now. 321 minutes on the ice, 26 goals for. They had 11, they have 26. That earns you a spot at number one. Expected goals for is 19.5. Actual goals against is eight. One of the lowest on this list for players that play that many minutes together. Expected goals against is 10.4. These guys are overperforming in every category. Dougie Hamilton's an elite right shot defenseman. And Siegenthaler is a two-way defender that has some of the best plus minus and advanced analytics in the NHL. He's finally made it up to the top pairing with Hamilton. And this is one of the big reasons that the New Jersey Devils have been on the win streaks that they're on. So you're going to have to tune back into this channel to see if they can hold that spot but these guys are absolutely magical even when these guys are in trouble they're not in trouble Siegenthaler steps up here plays a really nice gap on the New York Rangers takes a big risk to get that puck where he misses it that's okay it happens really good back check and then take a look at what he ends up doing he backtracks through the middle of the ice like a forward he doesn't overcommit. he stays with his man he is absolutely the best at making sure that he knows where everybody is at every point in time so as we're going through watch Dougie's head take a look take a look take a look he's watching that puck beautifully staying with his man tying him up and it's just such a boring little play because it ends up over here we've seen all these beautiful goals we've seen all these amazing shots dives but you know what why do you need that you don't I want boring defensemen that make the game look easy and right now these two are making the game look easy so there's my top five as well I promised you my own opinion on this list well here's my top 10 pairings if I close my eyes don't look at any statistics and tell you who my gut feel tells me who I want on my team as a hockey coach number one is Taysen McCarr number two is McAvoy and Lindholm these guys have been awesome all year McAvoy was hurt that's why he's not on this list he'll make the next iteration don't worry then I want Lindgren and Fox even though I can't stand the defensive prowess of Adam Fox Fox. I still want this line because they're going to produce. I've had many offensive defensemen in the past that don't play great defense. They still contribute hugely for you. I want Mikey Anderson and Drew Doughty. I want Pelic and Pollock as number five. I want Theodore and McNabb as number six. I want Martinez and Petrangelo as number seven. I want Heiskanen and Miller as number eight. I want Darlene or Samuelson as number nine. And I want Magna and Carlson. I don't even care about Magna. It's all about Carlson. Whatever line Carlson's on, I want him on my team. So there you have it. You have my opinion. You have facts who are the actual top five are you have four snubs that are overperforming right now we've learned all about defensemen you better be smashing subscribe and hitting like down below this video was quite a bit of work for all you guys but it's a passion project we love sharing with you the coaches board and the intricacies of this amazing game we'll catch you in the next video and please hey stay tuned and take a look at this video we made yesterday about unbelievable crazy facts in this game of hockey that you need to know right now